is on, huh? Yes. Can you help me, everybody? Regia, mi sentite da Margherita? Mi sentite? Hello, hello. Margherita, partiamo. Uh, now let's go back uh, to uh, to our uh, to where we left. Uh, now I leave uh, a, w a word uh, to you. Is on? Is it on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thanks again for coming. Let's just start again. Let's continue. As you may remember, we were seeing the difference between new style and old style classes. Okay. As we have seen, uh, old style classes are a bit weird because. Uh, it's not unified the type and the, and the, and the, well the classes and the types. So when you have an instance, for instance, you can see that its type is instance instead of the type instead of the class. And uh, you get other benefits like like the option of subclassing built-in types, descriptors with slots, properties, static and class methods and so on. Okay, so remember, use always new style classes. This is a default in Python 3, but in Python 2, you have to inherit from object, always. You have to do it manually, you have to specify it, unless you are inheriting from uh, another new style class. So you, do you remember the previous example? In this example, we have we have a class with just a meth a function, well, a method, which prints the type and prints self dot underscore underscore class. Okay. So we inherit from this class, creating a new class, an empty new class, and we create an instance of this new class and then we execute the method. And this is an old style class, so again we have the same problem. How can we solve it? We can inherit from both at the same time. We can inherit from an old style class and from object, so it's multiple inheritance, but in this case you are converting your, your, your subclass into a new style class. This is useful because some standard library classes in some modules in Python 2 are uh, old style classes. They have not been uh, ported to new style classes because of its internals or whatever. Okay, so when you want to use them and you want to have new style class benefits, you just have to inherit from this old style class and inherit from object, from both, and then problem solved. <coughs> okay, if we do it and we check again, we see how now our subclass is a new style class. Yes? What if we invert my old class in object? If we invert in the order. Uh, Good question. <laughs> How was it called? Yeah. Oops. It works so okay. But, well, yeah, let's continue. And we will see something related with this, but later. Another question? No? Okay. Okay, let's continue then. It's important to understand, and the, the most important thing is use always new style classes. 
you, you just have to write the parentheses on the object and you get lots of benefits. Maybe you don't see the benefits at first time, but maybe later you have to subclass, you have to add new features or you have to do a refactor and then you would say, oh, why I didn't use new style, okay? So let's continue. Now we are gonna see the, what's called the data model, right? I create a fraction. There is a fraction type in Python, but I create mine because, because I want it, okay? And I have a numerator, I have a denominator, and this is, this is all I have in this, in this simple class. I create an instance, and the thing is that if I try to print the, this instance, if, if I try to represent it, what I, what I get is this, this stuff, okay? console dot fra my fraction object add zero x whatever it's not useful right if you if you print log traces and you have this it doesn't tell you anything or it doesn't tell you much so it would be much better if you could when you print your objects to have num numerator and denominator values right and we can do it Well, due to the resolution, the slow, the, the low resolution, maybe it's a bit hard to understand, but we have the init, we already had it, but now we have two new methods. One is underscore, underscore, str, underscore, underscore, and the other is a dropper. So if you look at the dog string, you will understand what they do. So the first one is called, each time that you call str of your instances of your class. So when you are looking for the string representation of your class, or when you try to convert your class to a string, sorry, this method is called always. And when you try to uh, get the representation of your instances, this second method is called. Let's try it. And yes, print fraction one, and what we get? Five slash two, it's what we want. So it looks much better. When we print the representation, we get my fraction, five comma two, okay? Repres representation should look like uh, more or less the code that you use to create that object, or it's what it's supposed to be. While the conversion to string is what you want to put here. It's, it's well, it should be representation, but if you want to put other things, it's up to you, okay? You are implementing this behavior right now with implementing these two methods, and here you customize how it behaves. And this is the data model. This is a way to customize your own objects. You can define special methods with a predefined name, and then those methods will be called when a certain special syntax is executed. What you can customize? You can customize instantiation and object creation. Look at this. In the first example, nobody found strange this method, but this is part also of the data model. It's a method with a certain name, which is called when a new instance is created. Most probably you are used to implement your own underscore underscore init methods, but most probably you never realize of, of it, that there is not only the underscore and underscore in it, there are lots of methods that you can implement and Python will use them when you try to do certain things with uh, your instances. What things? Well, representation, as we have seen, rich comparison, you know, the, the comparison of uh, one instance greater than the other, greater or equal, different, Arithmetic operations, you can assume, multiply, divide, uh, the power, all of them, you can implement special methods to, to customize this behavior. Attribute access, you can customize how an attribute inside your instances is accessed. You can even emulate certain, emulate certain types, like a container type. You can make your instances look like lists or look like dictionaries. You can make your objects behave like context managers, like uh, collables, and lots of options. Okay, so let's see some examples to understand much better how it works. <coughs> Oof. 
Okay. We won't see the example at once, but okay. It's again my fraction, but this time I have implemented several methods. I have a method called value, which really gets the, the mathematical value of, of the division between both, a float, okay. We have underscore, underscore, LT, underscore, underscore, LE, underscore, underscore, EQ, and not equals. Look at the doc strings and you will understand what these methods are doing. Okay? So LT stands for less than and it's called look LT and the arguments are self and other. So each time that you have self, so you have this instance, the the uh, less than symbol and the other and any other object, this function will be called. The same happened with the less equal, with equal, with not equal. Let's see an example. I, I instantiate uh, three fractions and I compare them and it works. So 2.5 is different of 2.5, false. 2.5 is equal to 2.5, true. 1.5 is less than 2.5, yeah, it's true, okay? What's happening here under the hood? So the thing is that it looks for the less than, comes here, finds that this method is defined, and then it calls this method with self and other. So it calls a method on the first instance, on frag2. So it goes to frag2 dot, so this code is exactly the same that this. Okay? Any questions? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you could consider it. you are overloading the operators, but you can do lots more stuff, not only o overloading operators. You, we will see more examples now of your, you can do. So typically the underscore underscore names are reserved names for, for this kind of, of internal standard library or, or internals. So avoid using uh, or avoid defining in your own classes methods with double underscores unless you want to redefine something. Okay, here we are, we are implementing or we are defining how it should behave in these cases, okay? Let's see more examples. <coughs> Look, we can try the other way and it works. <coughs> Remember that we only define less than and less or equal. And now we are doing greater than or greater equal in this example, and it works. Python is able to say, okay, so I have to do it just the other way, no problem. I'm able to do it. And it tries to do it, and it works. So, yeah. Well, it understands that uh, uh, greater than is the opposite of uh, less than. Greater than, greater or equal is the opposite that less than. So in some cases, he's, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, okay. yeah, but, well, let, let's see more examples, and we will see that it's not able to do it always, but it's a bit, a bit uh, clever. We can even use other types. Here we're using ints or floats, and it works. But it only works because I implemented this way, so it's up to you to... Uh, implement the compatibility with other with other uh, types. Let's see the let's see the implementation of the not equal. Okay, look at the not equal. I try to retrieve the value of self and other. I know that self 
has a value method because I have implemented self and I know exactly what it has. But maybe other doesn't have the, the value. So it fails, it raises an exception, an attribute error, and then here I catch it and say, okay, other did not have value. Let's try to evaluate its value directly this way, and it works. So I'm able to compare here fractions and any other numeric type. But maybe if I use real values, maybe, it, well, I'm not, no, uh, sorry, real, uh, imaginary values, I'm not sure how it would work. I should check, okay? But it's up to you to implement the behavior of those methods, so it's up to you to be uh, compatible with other types. So you don't have to define all the possible methods. Python, regarding rich comparison, Python can try to take the opposite, can try, not always. So uh, also Python has uh, coercion. So in some, in some cases, Python 2, sorry, not Python 3. In some cases, Python could try to change the type automatically of, of the argument in order to to let the, the operation succeed. Uh, this won't happen in Python 3, and you shouldn't expect it to happen. So it's better if you, uh, if you are able to deal with any type of, of input instead of uh, relying on Python and coercion and magic, okay? Let's see more examples. In this case, Look, it fails, right? It says always true. 10 is greater than 2.5, true. 10 is less than 2.5, it should say false, and it says true. So as I said, Python is able to take the opposite, but uh, uh, bear in mind that here it's, you have to take the opposite, but the first element it's not uh, an instance of fraction, so he has, Python has to take the opposite twice. Has to take the second argument as the self and has to put the, the int in the other place and at the end it fails. So it's much better if you implement all of the rich comparison operators. So what is it doing? It's, I, don't, I don't really understand what's doing it here. So we could, yeah, we could put uh, some traces in all the methods and we will see which ones it's calling. And and, and well, the thing is that it's, it's failing. So uh, also you cannot implement uh, everything and it could work. It's better, if you want a better compatibility with other types, it's better if you implement all the, all the rich comparison methods, okay? The good thing also is that if you implement the, the rich comparison methods, and if I have, I have not, I have not, I don't have here the example, but if you have a list of fractions in this case, you could sort the list and Python would be able to sort the list automatically. Because you have the comparison method, so I will, uh, Python is able to compare and to sort a list of, of fractions in this case, okay, of my fractions. So this time I have added also greater than and greater equal, and then now it works, okay? So take care. Yeah, you can, you can skip implementing some of the rich comparison operators, but maybe you have a strange case and it fails. Be aware of it. And this is it. Any questions up to now? Yeah. So uh, why is it necessary that you implement uh, the underscore underscore equal method as well as the not equal method? Because, uh, in other words, why can't Python automatically uh, detect? Uh, uh -huh, it's not equal. So uh, well, it's 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 what I said that in some cases, depending on the on the types of the of the arguments, uh, he's not able to deal with it. I don't I don't know exactly what's the the the, the logic behind it. So maybe we should look at, at the C code to see what's Python doing exactly, but in some cases it fails. So it's better if you try to implement everything. It's, it's quite easy. Or, well, sometimes you can implement them like uh, calling the, the opposite and, and doing the negation yourself, but it's much better if you do it as, as, you, as we have seen. I'm just wondering, 
I'm just wondering what do you lose by implementing these built-in uh, functions? In the sense that since they're built-in, there's already a, a, a native or a default definition yes. for them. It's, it's the data model of the, of the object class. So you, when you add subclass in object, you, will, you, you just have to define these methods with the, with the special name, and, and that's all. Python will look for, for the, we check the inst uh, your instances and we look in the class to find, to try to find these methods. And if the methods are defined, Python will call these methods. Uh, how you know which methods exactly you have to, you have to implement? Again, it's the, it's the same, it's the same page in the, in the Python official documentation that, that we saw previously. Okay, if you go here to uh, customization, you can look for uh, customizing, customizing. Well, it's easier if I do uh, less than. And here you have, here is everything explained and defined, okay? Oops, great. And in the official documentation, you have absolutely everything. Okay, uh, I have lots of examples regarding it, but, but you should always go, when, when you want to implement them, at least take a look at the official documentation. There are corner cases of these kind of things that maybe I'm not covering, okay? So we have seen rich comparison. Let's try a, a now to emulate a container type, right? What's a container? Okay, we can implement... Uh, for instance, len, which is called when you call the built-in function len to get the length of the content of your instance. We can implement get item, which is called when you do self, square brackets, and a key. And bear in mind that this key could be two things, two different things. It could be uh, a key like in a dictionary or it could be an index like in a list or a tuple. Okay, so you can implement both behaviors or just one of those behaviors. And the opposite, instead of retrieving a key, you can set the value of a key. Yeah. Yeah, in this case, maybe you should use is instance to check what you are receiving. Actually, we have one ex in the exercises. You will have to do to do it. Does it? Is it? Do you hear me right or no? Hello, hello. Yeah, okay. In the exercises, you will have to do. Maybe. We have to move. Okay. I think it's my microphone. Hello. No, it's it's a separate one, I think. Okay, well, we will see. Yeah, when I speak a bit louder. We, we will see an example in the exercises of how you can try to how you can try to uh, figure out what you are receiving and and perform the your business logic according to your inputs. Okay, but yes, you should you should use is instance and then compare what you have received. Okay, so it's important to understand this thing. Okay, get item will be called each time this is found in the code. Okay, so when Python finds an instance of my fraction square bracket something a square bracket, this method will be called get item. Okay, and when it finds the same but in the left side of of an equal, this other method will be called. Okay, get item and set item. Right, understood. And there is also the len method, which is called to retrieve the length of, of the content. Let's play a bit with it. Let's see some examples to understand it better. So, how I, 
how I have implemented it. I implemented two things, both uh, index access and key access emulating a dictionary. It's not a dictionary because it only has two keys. It has num for the numerator and then for the denominator. And you can also tell me, no, I want index 0 or index 1. And you will receive numerator or denominator. Pretty easy, right? In the set item, I do more or less the same, but instead of returning the value, I set it internally. That's all. So that's why I can come here and do f1.num. Sorry, f, f1, square brackets, uh, num. And I get the numerator. It's the same that, it's the same that if I do f1.num or f1 of 0 because I have implemented it this way. So again, it's up to you to customize the behavior of your, of your classes, of your objects. Maybe you don't want uh, key access, you only want index access, or you want both, or, or you don't want it, then you don't implement those methods. It's up to you, right? I implemented, it's quite silly, this example, but at least it's an example just to let you understand what is happening, okay, how it works. Okay, we have seen the retrieval, the get item. Let's see the other way, set item. F1, square brackets, zero. And it calls here, it comes here and says, set item, self, key, and value. What's key in this, in this example, in F1? Yeah, zero. And value is five. Okay? Understood? Any questions? Yeah, question. Will this automatically handle multiple dimensions? Sorry? Close to your mind. Will this automatically handle multiple dimensions? Multiple dimensions? You mean if, if you have a list in this index? Yeah, you, you should you should put the square bracket, square bracket, and then a square bracket, a square bracket. Yeah, and, and it takes and it would take the first one. It would take uh, so if you if you did something like zero one, it takes the first one and sorry, it's f f one. So if 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 index zero was a list, it would work or a string, and you go to index one of the list, the string, the tuple, or whatever. Or another fraction, it would be quite weird, but, but you could do it. Okay, so it takes just the beginning and says, okay, what's this? And checks for the get item method, Python founds the, the method, and then goes inside it, calls it, and it will return a list, or tuple, or whatever, and then it will process the second part again using get item or whatever okay okay let's continue here you have the link to the exact documentation of, of emulation of container types in the in the official documentation okay you have everything in the bottom of the module and also here in the middle of the code so if you check later at home or, or wherever all the code I have provided you, you can check it. Okay, more examples. This time we're going to emula emulate numeric types. What does it mean? It means that we're going to implement the addition of two fractions. In this case, uh, I have not implemented the full business logic of the addition of, of uh, fractions. I do it in a, in a simple way. But the thing is, if the denominator is the same, <coughs> I just assume the numerators. And the denominator keeps the same. Okay? Do you remember your mathematics lessons at college? So, if the denominators are different, the thing is that I just multiply 
one by the other, and then I sum together. So I left the same, the same uh, denominator multiplying, and I multiply denominators and sum. Okay, and again, if I get an attribute error, it means that <coughs> that other, that the left side, sorry, the right side of the of the plus of the addition symbol is not a fraction. So what I do in this case is just multiply this number by the denominator and I assume it to our numerator, okay? And this is the addition. However, check out that I'm defining two additional methods here and I'm doing it in a bit strange way. Instead of implementing again exactly the same method, I tell the class that he will have or it will have another method called R add with underscores and it will do exactly the same than add. And the same with I add. Why? Okay, so add is called when we do self plus other. And it calls self plus other. R add will be called when we do other plus self and and when other is not able to perform the addition. For instance, other is a float. Float doesn't know about my fraction class, my strange fraction class, so they won't be able to take a float and add to itself uh, a fraction. Python will try to do it. It will fail and it will say, okay, then let's try the opposite. Let's try the reverse operation. Again, it's up to you to implement the reverse add. It depends on if you are able or not to deal with it or, or whatever. It's your business logic, okay? There was a question here, no? Okay. And I add is called when you do self plus equals other. Okay, let's see an example. I have two instances of fraction, fraction one, fraction two, and I can sum them. And the result, five slash three, two slash three, and the result is seven slash three. Okay, it works. It called here, it came here and said, okay, I have underscore underscore add, I call the method, I provide both arguments, and it returns a value. Notice that uh, we are not changing the instance. We are returning always a new object. You could change the behavior here if you want. You could say, okay, I take self and I change its numerator directly. You should return something, but you could do and in place modification with the with the with the plus if you want it. Maybe it will be weird. So it depends on you again. Let's see more examples. This case with an int and it works. And let's do the other way. The int on the left. What method is being called here? R I R yeah, er, ah, okay. So it tries to call the addition in the int and it fails. It rises a type error and it says, no, I'm not able to deal with this strange object. And then Python says, okay, let's try to look for er, add in the right operand, which is a fraction. And then it founds the er, add method, the underscore underscore er, add. And this is the method called, in this case. And we can call the plus equals, and it also works, of course. 